I really hate to admit if I'm wrong, but uh, Mr. Peterson recommended about a year ago that we should have a four-wheel drive group bed pickup on the, on the property for use uh, on and off property and, and uh, response. Sorry about that. And uh, over the last month, uh, that, that requirement, uh, as you're absolutely right, sure, we could have used it at least several times. And so I asked Keith and Sons for a bid. Uh, they, in their true form, came in with a very attractive bid. Uh, the obvious question, if I were in your chairs, was where are we going to get the money and, and uh, show it? So I asked uh, Ms. Uh, Dries Culette in her spare time with Baby Max, if she could take a shot at giving me some accurate numbers on budget versus actual expenses the first four months of the year, and show me the money of where I could pull thirty-two thousand dollars without draining an account for the remainder eight months of the fiscal year. And it it turns out we have two spots where we were uh, way under in terms of expenditures. One is general and office expenses and other than capital expenditures. Uh, the capital expenditure budget was 250000 and it's very easy to see. We're not going to use all of that because that number was directly associated with the pump house overhaul and renewal at two hundred and fifty grand. Uh, since then, uh, we've worked with the FAA and been able to apply for and receive grant money for the amount of 125, right? 125,000. Uh, so that took that liability down. We didn't know that when we made the budget. We created the budget in April of May of last year. Uh, we were hoping we could do that, but that, that has actually happened. So I might ask of the board is that we pull $32,087.39 and purchase a cash purchase of a new truck. That includes tax uh, from Keith and Sons, and that will free up one hybrid vehicle that runs on electric and turn it over to maintenance or turn it over to security, which uh, Mike needs in the security department. And that will, will still leave us a pool car available for everybody's use anywhere around. And, and Karina, I really appreciate your weigh in on this. It forced me to rethink it. Uh, it it's great to have people not shared and not afraid to share honest opinions. She came in with a uh, a different look at this, and I really appreciate that. Of course, we rethink it, and uh, so we've added lights and radios to the pool car because we also found out it doesn't do us having a car on standby that we can't drive on the runways or taxiways when you need it during a time of a mishap. It was so we've outfitted it with radios and lights. I still recommend we go ahead with this purchase. Uh, Mike's ordered an extra set of radios and a light bar, and I ask your approval. And I hope if you have any other questions on where I put the money, I'm happy to show you that working. But anyway, Karina has done a, a work of, and I told Mike we were doing this. I don't think these numbers are exact, but they're certainly the best we have and they're very close. And I've asked her to go all the way back to January and work forward for the calendar year and then work forward from July 1st, tracking us to uh, end of the fiscal year. And I think this is going to lead to a very accurate budget development. And I think this year is frankly very accurate from what I've seen. Any questions? And I ask your support for approval. I, I have a question. I'm just wondering, is uh, an F-150 a large enough truck to hold me? It is. And I, uh, I even asked, uh, I went to a second source. My brother's been selling these in Bakersfield for the last 45 years. And I, I said, what's the history on these? Uh, I asked our maintenance guys who have the same engine and the other Fords we bought this year. They said they love it. It's a twin turbo V6 for our use. It's the best mileage combination. Uh, lightest weight still gives us four-wheel drive. I think it's the, the best combo. Chair Leonard obtain a motion to approve the purchase of an F-150 truck. Not to exceed $32,087.39. And, and cents. Um, I should cover any, uh, any issues. Okay. No, I, I appreciate that, and I understand where you're going with that. But I, I think we pretty much captured the numbers in this. I don't want to come at $10 short. You got it. Yes, sir. I got it. We could Thank take you. it out in the second. Yeah. 
That's what we've done, motion. Okay, so that was a motion, yes. not just a suggestion. No, motion for okay. approval up to 40 days, not to exceed. Okay, I have a motion to uh, from Director Peterson to approve the purchase of the A truck up to 40000 And I have a second, is that uh, correct yes. for you? Uh, from Director Deaver. Are there any further questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Okay, I have seen that wall that has continuously failed. I know they tried to uh, paint it and patch it, but it's been addressing it quite a bit. I'd really like to see if we could work with the county somehow to bring that curb and gutter in and possibly bring sidewalks up to our entrance and maybe someday continue that on to the uh, airport and tie into the airport boulevard with a walkway bike path that would allow uh, uh, tenant employees and, and the general public to access the uh, airport from Belshar and make it a little safer manner than it is right now. And I had, you know, I talked at the last meeting about fixing up that section of Belshar from K Street this way. And the county went out and put a little rectum light on it, which is what they do every year, and that doesn't solve the problem because it, that street has deteriorated to the point to where it's like Belgian block. And so anyway, Zach and I emailed back and forth, and I said, you know, they really got to rebuild it. So I think that, and the idea of curb and gutter and sidewalk, that's a great idea. Make a nice fence. And that fence, and that, and the, uh, everything, the ceremony we had there uh, on better days. The cemetery, when we came here in 1948, that was a disgusting mess. It was some crappy wire fence. There were tumbleweeds blowing through there. There was no grass. And two members of the Pulos family, uh, father and son, went over there on their own and cleaned that place up and planted grass. We had a woman, they hired a woman to manage it, a nurse from Cash Creek, who went over there and checked every grave. She drove a post down in the ground to locate uh, remains and coffins and developed a chart of who's buried in that, going back to the Spanish American War. It's, it's really a beautiful, and that fence is just unbelievable. It's really pretty. Now we get this white house on the corner. Uh, in general, for the um, fine efforts that they've done over the past three and a half weeks, some of the tough times we had here at the airport, I'd specifically like to call out Stu and his efforts, um, Kevin and his efforts in uh, participating in the various rescues and search as it took place uh, in those time frames with a couple of different accidents. So um, I think the board should take pride in the job that the, uh, the Air and Space Board team did in responding to uh, some of the uh, situations that occurred here over the past three and a half weeks. So fine job by the whole team. And uh, like good job. Thank you. Thank you. It's for me, when something significant occurs, either something significant from a business perspective, a mishap, a uh, newsworthy item. I take the time to sit down and call each one of our stop by and see or come to your house. Uh, I know I've done all those different things. Well, the 31 October event, you didn't get a call from me, and it didn't even dawn on me until about two hours ago that I didn't call. I called you on the 24th, and uh, maybe I have a threshold also, and i got to tell you that uh, on the 20 to 31 event, all of our phone lines were consumed. My cell phone became inoperative, like it has at every one of these things. I had 45 messages fill up my cell phone in one minute. And those all news me. And so now it just rings, I can't use it, and it turned off. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. It, does, it gets silly, because it doesn't know how to handle constant incoming ringing. And it just goes on, so you got to turn it off. What good news is, we have invested in a red phone in the fuels office. Uh, Ten years ago, we haven't used it very much, thank God, but on both of those days, the red phone was used. No one knows the number, so no one can give it out, therefore no one can call in. We have the ability to call out. I'm sorry, I didn't think of it. Bill, I understand you were concerned. I'm sorry, I, I just flat overlooked that one. So I asked staff, is there a way we could leave that in? Mike said the school districts have an automatic redial for board members. We have common messages, one-way communications. They do the same thing for parents. Well, that's free. 
at home. I don't, I, my kids have been at school a long time, obviously. I didn't know that. So I'm going to look into that, and it's a way that the board members can get a one-way message, and I don't have to go track everything down. But still, I think it's good practice to track it down and ask your questions about things that come up. Also, you can use text, possibly, or emails. I couldn't use text that day, Bill. No. So maybe somebody else has got a phone deal or something. Yeah, no, no. I, I can sit. I'm not going to apologize much oh, more, I, but I, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, next, Veterans Day at the cemetery. That was a that was really a, a good deal this year. And Kevin and I went over and checked out the fallen soldier uh, bronze that the district had purchased and installed. And we said to each other, "Why don't we have something like that at the airport?" And I don't know if y'all have taken the time to look at that, but that's really a classy memorial. And uh, I don't know who's behind that. I, somebody in the community donated for that, and that's a classy memorial. Golden Queen Mining. Okay. So See, that, that base, Golden Queen Mining, donated in 1935. That airport was, this airport was built to haul gold out of that mine in 1935. They donated the base for a flagpole. Now the district, the cemetery district, which has five locally appointed people, uh, decided to build a new pole where we were sitting. And so they had this beautiful base, and somebody on the board said, let's put this memorial on. And that's how it's there. And I believe we'll be paid for that also. Well, that was a classy act. Um, I'd also like to congratulate the newest member of our family, Max Cuvac. <laughs> and uh, Max is here today along with his mother, and uh, I, I tell you, that, that's uh, some of the best news we've had. And uh, Karina, we're so proud of you and Todd, and, and Max is just a doll. He's so cute. We think so. <laughs> and uh, it, it's, just, it's, it's just one of those really neat things. The election. I want to uh, thank everybody who put their name on the ballot. I've done that. It's not easy. And uh, the, the voters voted. We'll see the new board next month and uh, we'll go down that path. But I want to thank everybody who uh, chose to put their name out there on the ballot. That says we're doing something right when people want to be a part of this organization. Uh, the Breitling Company was here twice. They finished their second round of shooting, I don't know if it was last week or two weeks ago. It's still kind of run together now. Um, but on one day, as it turns out, we had some pretty remarkable talent. We had John Travolta at the airport. We had Marcus Allen. We had Merle Haggard. All coming through the airport in private jets at about the same time. And uh, there was, we didn't know that two of them would be stopping by. Merle's truck broke down. Her bus broke down on the way to a concert in Phoenix. And he spent a few hours with us. That was uh, pretty interesting. Uh, the Rising Tree uh, Wind company out of Oregon received notice the same day as us last Tuesday that the FAA had issued their notice of the termination of no hazard of the 30 turbines, a number of which are already installed, which triggered a uh, next payment to the district of $1.2 million. I'll tell you, we've earned it. That's been a, a long distance haul through all the process and the reviews uh, by all. Uh, Supervisor Scribner, and uh, we went over in detail the excise federal equipment program, and it was a very good meeting with the chief. I took the time to thank him as well, Al, of the, uh, he, I, he, I'd never really worked with the current chief personally, like I had with Cody and Eckhart and uh, a number of the fellows in the past, but this is a really bright guy, and uh, he wanted to know if we're getting the support we need out of the Kern County Fire Department. And I said, well, I can name the guys by name and the commitment and the, and the level of service and answering the call. But uh, he, he heard it. It was really nice to have him over here. We also had the GT Auto Club Auto event uh, in the mix of everything over the last month. So we've had a very busy month. Uh, I also want to read a statement before we go into closed session with the permission of the chair. This is going to take a minute, everybody, and at the appropriate time over the next week, I'd be happy to issue this in print for an op-ed for the local paper. But the name of this paper is A Letter of Gratitude to the Aerospace Valley. Character, 
character is seldom created during good times. However, the view from the opposite end of the telescope seems to define it in spades. Character, in my glossary of terms, <clears throat> defines the people whom I choose to work, play, and socialize. Over the past four weeks, my 42-year definition of character has not changed. For us, the morning of October 24th started out like most others. It included a brief scan of the daily flight schedule, a brief on special testing in the rocket motor area on the north side, and official visitors. Running a test airport and spaceport has a natural way of keeping you on edge at all times, even though most may never see it in your eyes. Regardless, it's there. Just ask Kevin, our operations director, or Harold of maintenance, or me. What we did not know at 0926 on 24 October was that our character would be exposed to the world over the next four weeks, beginning in one minute. My first clue. Stu, Tiger 3 is overdue, and Tower just said that an emergency locator transmitter could be heard on 121.5 from somewhere near Cone Lake. Now this information taken separately is common. Taken together, it's never good and triggers action by many, and it did. My response to Kevin and Chris was, take Chris, take a case of water, and start driving north on 14. I'll go directly to the school, obtain what I can, and relay it. Latitude, longitude, frequency for the SAR effort, etc. Give 911 a call and make a preparatory call for assistance from the Sheriff's Office and the Kern County Fire Department, Hilo at Keene. I'll be right behind you. It didn't take long to ascertain that Tiger 3 was not responsive by a radio or cell phone, but we knew a general area in the info was arriving fast. I relayed what I knew via our, our radios in the trucks and met up with Kevin and the Kern County Sheriffs on Ransburg Road, just off Garlock Road. As the day unfolded, we soon realized that the Valley had lost an incredibly talented test pilot and a German flight test engineer on training just east of Cone Lake. This led to a long, introspective weekend for many, and the questions began flying. Why? How? Etc. Answers of all these are still unknown as we write. But we could not get past the depth of our loss. It hurt, and it affected the entire valley, the entire research, development, and test community. By the end of the first memorial on 29 October, we were still in a daze, but beginning to function as a unit. The airport was in high gear, and the school was easing back in the air. By Thursday evening, as ground crews from Scaled were preparing for fuel loading, of the planned Spaceship 2 flight on Friday, October 31st, our focus had shifted. Things were moving forward. Outcomes from the previous week are executed in our, we executed our internally and external SAR efforts. They were all professional, by the book, by all parties. You could say that we were tuned up, all for the wrong reasons, and ready for the last mishap, as is always the case. Internally, we were conducting our mandatory emergency response pre-brief for the Spaceship 2 on the previous Tuesday and were ready to return to work at 0430 on 31 October to begin operations for a 0800 takeoff. Everyone arrived on schedule and once again I received my morning status briefing. We knew their one to two hour delay for, was, was on hand for normal reasons, slightly cooler temperatures than we had expected. Our emergency responders briefing in this room included three new faces from the Sheriff's Office and one from the Fire Department. We went through each detail as if it were everyone's first time. Each one of these sessions ends with an overview of current events and items to keep in your head because we were about to enter game time. And as I always end and say, this is the real deal every time. As the usual people and crowds gathered at the base of the tower, which is our approved viewing area, we noticed a somewhat larger crowd than normal. Nice crowd. <laughs> our nice day. Big crowd. We see the cons of White Knight 2, 50 miles east, headed our way. That's our visual 10-minute reminder and the whisper in the crowd. As onlookers listened to Carl in the tower clear scat for landing, the crowd became characteristically silent. Absolutely silent. Three, two, 
one, release, release, release. Item away, good light, nominal engine. Then nothing. Character time had begun for the second week in a row. Our second Friday in a row. Nearly the same time, same location over the North Test Ranges. Then the radio call, which says so much to us graybeards. One shoot. And the pre-briefed cavalry departed to the north on cue. So who displayed character? Well, number one, Dr. Al Peterson. He volunteered immediately in Tiger One and the Huey. <clears throat> who one week earlier had lost his best friend and a test pilot. With him, Ed Solsky, test pilot, first to make contact with the survivor. Then Chuck Antonio, a former flight surgeon of mine, was in the helicopter with Al and our firefighter and EMT, Patrick Campbell, along with Nicola, his co-pilot. Just previously, the week ahead, just like Russ Stewart, C.J. Surkow was providing on-seat sorrow, as Nigel Speedy had done a week earlier. Different days, <clears throat> these people just happened to be airborne and answered the call to provide the airborne on scene command and first on scene with precise descriptive commentary to guide the follow-up responders. Just guys who a few days earlier were mourning the loss of a squadron mate and a week later saving another. Mercy Air medical responders who quietly carry out their craft daily but on these two days in October of 2014, we're supporting the same people whom they meet at lunch at the Voyager every day. Character, on call, in full view. Kevin, our Director of Operations, and Chris, once again, first on scene, two weeks in a row. Kevin and Chris, you have my deepest respect for running to the sound of gunfire. Kevin, a former USN rescue swimmer, He's also a patriot. He has character. Then there was our office staff, who to a person knew exactly what to do because they participated in training for so many times. <coughs> Under the leadership of former employee Bob Rice and our current fire chief, Deputy Chief, or chief Rich Fobble, and Deputy Chief Joe Hughes, who guide us in emergency preparedness every Friday morning. Through them, we know exactly what to do where to go first. All true professionals, like Tanina Bernard and Lynn Cleopatra, <laughs> that's an inside joke, and Carrie Rollins, who run our front office and accounting day office by day, but instantly shift gears and manage public information, set up spaces for press conferences, established and captured exacting timelines with Mike and Sarah, lock down video, capture weather information, and prepare me for my mandatory reportings to FAA, NTSB, AST, and others. And then the unknowns, like Cam Martin and John Kelly from NASA Armstrong, who quietly arrive, settle in, and begin collecting data from my press notes and organizing assistance from NASA and the Air Force Grief Counselors. And Debbie Roth, my assistant, who quietly knows how to think for me, especially during crisis. Character on display. All responders, from Brian Marshall's Kern County Fire Department, Engine 14, Battalion Chief, Battalion Chief Jim Eckroth, and Deputy Chief Mike Cody, our local Kern County Sheriff's Substation Commander, Sergeant Steve Williams, Cal City Fire Department and PD, Ridgecrest Police Department, Lieutenant Little of the Sheriff's Office, who took on scene command and established for seven days, 24-hour control point, secured the scene for NTSB. The crew of the Kern County Fire Department Rescue Helicopter from Keene and Kern County Sheriff Donnie Youngblood, who personally visited the site, committed hundreds of county personnel and other responding agencies under interagency agreements to the scene seven days, 24 hours a day, and provided exacting GIS mapping of the entire debris fields for NTSB. The hundreds of volunteer search and rescue personnel I tried to shake every hand for three days, but there were far too many spread over far too distance. From so many perspectives, from test pilots to office assistants, mechanics, maintainers, fuelers, operations directors, the emergency responders who showed your character, 
to the responsible members of our nation's press corps who patiently, and in some cases not so patiently, waited for my call back. You too have displayed character by accurately reporting and not running off with false information. To the kind notes of encouragement from all corners of the aerospace valley, <coughs> our nation and the world, your messages were timely and most sincerely received. To my dear friends at the National Test Pilot School, Scale Composites, the Spaceship Company, and Virgin Galactic, you are collectively, collectively a class act, and we're so proud to serve alongside your teams. Simply stated, I've never been so pleased to be a member of a small team with character who chose to make a big difference in our nation and the world. That completes my time.